Well, first of all, congrats to Arizona. They're a great team. Uh, they do a heck of a job. They're ranked, you know, number nine in the country for a reason. Um, they have everything. They have scoring at a, all levels. They can score it inside. They got great pull-up guys. They can shoot it from the three. They put a ton of pressure on you. Uh, they have great depth and athleticism. And, uh, and they're hard to stop. They're a high-octane offense. I feel like it's also their best defensive team since I've been in the league, uh, which is obviously just two and a half years. Um, I want to thank our crowd for coming out tonight. I thought we had a great home court. Our fans are outstanding. And uh, we're just really trying to will our guys. And I want to thank the Muss, our, you know, our student body, uh, for coming out in full force. And this is the type of environment that we have to have consistently. Uh, I think it's just they impact winning in such a great way. Um, super disappointed we didn't find a way to win there. We had some chances um, to make some plays, and we just didn't make enough of them. And credit to them, you know, they, they just made one more, you know, a couple more than us, but we had our moments there, and we make that big run. And I don't know how many shots we just missed that were point blank shots at the rim while we made that run. Uh, and then we had some chances, obviously, in, uh, in the overtimes, but really proud of how we fought back. You know, that first half wasn't. I thought we had a great start to the game, not so good in the middle area uh, of that first half, uh, mid to late. I just felt like we were disjointed on offense, and then I thought that really affected our defense, where we really gave up some easy um, opportunities to them in transition and on the offensive boards. And then at halftime, we just really challenged our guys, you know, going into half 41, down 41, 25, down 16. That's a hard spot to be in against a team of this caliber. Um, but you credit to our guys, man. We just kept fighting and fighting and fighting, and we scored 74 points in, in the second half slash, you know, all three overtimes. So we did some th good things to have ourselves give ourselves a chance. thought we played pretty good defense, specifically in that second half, and made it a little bit tough. We kept mixing it up, man zone, man zone. Um, thought that helped keep them off balance a little bit. Um, you know, and then we did a good job. You know, when we played them the first time, we just got destroyed in the paint. You know, they scored 50 in the paint to our whatever it was. And tonight, you know, they got us 52-48 in the paint. But we, we had a paint presence. We were able to attack the rim and get some baskets. We shoot 21 free throws, but we got to be able to convert those. Uh, we got to be able to finish those plays. Uh, and then the last thing is, I was just, the way we rebounded. You know, we just got destroyed at their place on the glass. I mean, I mean destroyed. I think where they were plus 18, four, I believe it was 42 to to 24, I, I believe is what it was. And for us, us to bail out, rebound them 57, 53, and get 21 offensive rebounds, you know, we haven't been a great offensive rebounding team as a whole this year. And so to be able to do that and convert a lot of those, I thought that was um, really, really big. So, um, you know, you don't get those moments every day to play a top 10 team in the country and you want to be able to capitalize and we gave ourselves every opportunity, but they gave, they just made a few more plays than us. Alex first. Uh, Craig, how disappointing actually is the free throw performance considering the game was so close up until the last couple minutes of the triple overtime? Well, like I told the guys, you know, in a game like that, when you play a tight game like that against a, against a really good team, you just we got to be able to seize the moment, and there's so many things that it can come down to, right? Certainly, free throw shooting was a really disappointing thing, um, you know, and it started right at the beginning, right, where we just had, and then and then when we were teetering on that uh, position where we could have gone ahead, right? Well, I don't remember what it was, 61, 60, or whatever. We had multiple possessions there where we had a chance to get over the top and really seize some momentum. Uh, we missed a couple putbacks. I think Gabe missed a shot. BC missed a shot. Clean looks, wide open looks. They just didn't go in. That happens sometimes. And then I think it was one for two at the foul line. One for two at the foul line. You know, it started early on in the game, though, and sometimes that can be contagious. But in a game like that, there's just so many things that you can look at. You know what I mean? Um, Caleb Love throws in one. I think it was at the end of the s uh, first or second overtime. I think maybe the second. Tough, super tough shot, but that's what that guy does. He missed some clean ones. He made a really tough one. You know, if you miss that, that shot, now we're up two with 45 seconds to go. So there's so many things that it comes down to. But certainly, you know, those are things that you feel like shooting free throws is a closed skill, right? You have open skills where it's like guys are closing out to you. It changes all the time, right? A closed skill, it's the exact same thing every single time and those things you feel like you have control of right there's no nobody's guarding you nobody's playing defense nobody's closing out you don't have to read a coverage and so um 
You know, it's been a little bit of an Achilles heel for us. Uh, I do feel like we're a good free throw shooting team, but we gotta, we gotta do something about it. Greg, I'm not asking you to comment on the refs, but tangentially, when you have close plays like that, especially like the Dave on call or some of those in overtime, how, how does that change how you can keep that momentum going? Well, those are huge. I mean, listen, those guys got tough jobs. Um, those guys have tough jobs. It's frustrating. Some of those, some of those are they're, they're hard, you know. And I got to see them on, you know. I just want to be able to watch it on film and you know go from there. But those are, I mean, listen, getting to the foul line and follow when you're shooting one ones and two free throws. That's how you seize momentum, right? And our team, when I've been a head coach, like our teams have always been really good at getting fouled, right? We have a different kind of team this year than maybe I'm a, I'm kind of used to. Uh, and we need to get fouled more often. It's been a bit of a, you know, on the road, we don't shoot many free throws. Tonight, you know, they shoot, what, 32 free throws to our 21. Like, that's a, I mean, 33% more. I'm not saying it always needs to be even, but those are those are big momentum plays, and there were some big ones at, at big moments. Uh, in, in your view, what was Arizona doing so well defensively in that first half to kind of force you guys into those late shot clock situations? Yeah, we... Uh, we just got to be more assertive and more aggressive. It, but listen, they they are they're very athletic. I mean, at most spots they're more athletic than us. Not at every spot, but at some of those spots, and and they do a good job uh, the way they play us. Um, uh, I thought we made some good adjustments at halftime with some of the scheme that we were running to help our guys. But but sometimes you, <laughs> it doesn't matter what you call if you <coughs> aren't the aggressor. We always say the aggressor always wins, and so. I felt like we were a little bit tentative on the offensive end, not necessarily right away. We had some really good looks that didn't go in early, uh, and we stayed in attack mode. But then I thought we were a bit disjointed, like the last ten minutes of that, you know, roughly the last ten minutes, eight to ten minutes of that first half. But I just felt like we wanted it easy, and we weren't just pass, pass, attack, moving, moving. We weren't being players without the ball consistently. Right, you got to be able to move without the ball against these guys. If you're just standing still, they're just gonna load up on you, and now it's hard. Right, the second half, I just thought we had way more ball movement, way more player movement, way more um, just making simple plays. That was the last thing we put on the board, uh, you know, in pregame. Like in these types of games, you just got to make the simple play, and not to oversimplify it, but it's the truth, right? And so the aggressor always wins. That's what we challenge them at halftime. Like. We got to be assertive. We got to have a great mentality. We got to play with force because I thought we were really on our heels, um, specifically that last eight to ten minutes of the first half. Josh, it seemed like the first half you were subbing quite a bit, trying to kind of mix it up so you get guys going. You slowed down obviously in the second half. Was was there a reason for that, or is it just guys are starting to make shots? Well, we're just going to play the guys that are performing. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, early on in that game, you could see they were subbing early. Uh, we subbed right out of, the, out of the first media timeout, right? We subbed in Ben, subbed in Lawson, subbed in Hunter, kept Gabe and Davon out there. Those guys got really gassed the next two and a half, three minutes. It's not often that those two guys asked to come out of the game, but they both asked. They were, de they were, they were really tired. Um, and so we are you know, we, what did we go? Eight deep, basically. Um, um, and so, you know, we got to be mindful of that. Then Gabe got, got really going, adrenaline kicks in, the fans get going, and that can kind of give you a little extra juice and, and give you a spark. But we had some really good performances. I thought, you know, I thought Jake Welling gave us some really good minutes. You can see how just his size, he's 6'9", 6'9 and a half. Uh, you know, coming off of two years without playing basketball, he's got his legs under him now, and he's really starting to figure some things out. Um, I thought Hunter... Hunter, I thought, played really well against Colorado. Hit a huge three, obviously, again tonight. He's making some great decisions. He's tough-minded um, defensively. Uh, BC really took over there for a stretch. He had a great look, especially the start of that second half. Um, and I thought our pit fives, both Kaba and, and Lawson, played with a lot of force. But just felt like we had to trim it down. Those guys had a great look to them. You know, obviously, when you go three overtimes, I mean, you, you get tired. I mean, both teams were really tired, you know, by the end of that game. And like I said, they just made a couple more plays. Uh, Craig, you guys obviously were undefeated here before tonight. Um, and, you know, it, w it wasn't that long ago, maybe within the last 18 months, that, like, the crowds weren't coming out as much and the curtains on the top were, there was, like, a big thing. You guys had 11,000 fans almost 
here tonight. How, what have you, what do you attribute sort of like the crowd support at home this season and how much, you alluded to it earlier, but how much do you really think it's helping you guys, especially this season? Oh, uh, you cannot understate what, what great crowds mean for the home team. I mean, you just, you just can't, I don't know that you can quantify it, you know? Uh, um, I mean, just look around all of college basketball right now uh, and how things are going. It's very, very, it's, it's, I don't know that it's ever been harder um, to, to win on the road as it has been this year. Look at what the top 10 is doing. The top 10 winning percentage on the road right now is what, 39% or 42%? And teams outside of the top 10. Yeah, yeah, so like it just has a, and so listen, we have to do our part. Like we have to, it helps to win and we've been winning and we beat some really good teams in non-conference play and in conference play. And, and we have to have, I, I think it helps to have an, uh, an exciting brand of basketball. I think we have that. I think we have really good guys in our program. Nobody's perfect and our guys aren't angels, but we have a group that you can support and back with their character on the floor. You can see how hard our kids compete. They're not kids or young men. You can see how hard they compete, but they're also great, great people off the floor. And they make, they're, they're just, it's, an, it's a really enjoyable group to be around, whether it's your, myself, my, my daughter, my sons, my wife, and I think um, uh, just the, the donors and the boosters and the people that meet them, they make such a great impression. I think it matters. And fans impact winning. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. Like, you look at some of these leagues, I was in the Big Ten for two years, and they had the number one home winning percentage within league play for like 24 straight years. But guess what? They also had the best attendance for 24 straight years, or it was like 30 straight years. So there's a common denominator there. So that's why I open it up with the opening statement. Can't thank our fans enough for showing up to support these guys. It matters to them. Two years ago, this place was, well, I can't speak beyond when I was here, but two years ago, we weren't great. We still competed really hard, but we know what this is about. Like, I get it. Uh, and we were, it was better last year. And then certainly this year, we're gaining a lot of momentum. And hopefully the word's getting out. But this is a group that our fan base can be proud of and they can support. Um, and we know we got to find ways to win, but it matters. Fans impact winning in a major way. Go, uh, Joe, we got uh, obviously, uh, emotional and physically drained game tonight. How do you kind of turn the page ahead uh, to Arizona State and make sure this doesn't kind of carry over? Yeah, to it's going to be tough. And as I said to our guys, we kept it short and sweet in there. I'm incredibly proud of how we competed. I didn't like how we competed necessarily in the first half. I thought we were on our heels. It's what good teams sometimes can do to you. But the way we, we were throwing haymakers in that second half, I mean haymakers, uh, against one of the best teams in the country. And it takes a lot out of you. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you look at some of the minutes that some of these guys played, but we're going for it all. Like, bring on the competition. It's what we believe in. But these guys... These guys aren't machines, but they have to do their rehab. They got to be due diligence with their body. We have guys that really care about it. We have a great sports performance team. So that's the physical part, right? And like we told our guys um, um, going into the Colorado week, we got to do the physical piece, which I thought we did tonight. And then you got to have the mental side, right? The mental toughness, the mental discipline, the mentality that it takes to go out there. And everybody talks about mental toughness and everybody talks about physical toughness. The part they don't always talk about is emotional. I mean, this is a really emotional game. And so now, who oh boy, you, you got to take on the challenge in a big time way against a team that, quite frankly, we've struggled with here the last couple of years. We've always had tight games with Arizona State, almost every, every game except the last time. I mean, my first two years, we played them three times, and every time it's come down to the last possession. And they're so long and so athletic. And so our legs are going to be tested, but it's going to be emotionally, we got to be so invested and we have to be so mentally tough. We know we're not going to be perfect, but we have to find a way. And it's going to be everybody. And some of these guys that didn't play as much just have to play better. We have to play better, right? And they will. Last one, Josh. As, as you get closer to March, obviously you want to be peaking and doing all that stuff. But how, how does a game like this actually help you as you prepare for that, knowing that these games are only going to get tougher? They're going to be more like that environment. Well, again, and I don't want to overstate this, Arizona's really good. Obviously, they're not undefeated. They've had some a couple tough losses in there too. <laughs> like, but um, they're really good. Like, tell me what they don't have. And so, um, you know, 
it's so disappointing to lose. Um, at the same time, the process does matter. And um, to be able to find a way to come back and put yourself in a position to win that game when at halftime, I'm sure there was a lot of, <laughs> a lot of doubters, right? And so this team competes. Um, we obviously want to play our best basketball. I thought we really responded well after a very difficult road trip to take care of business against a Colorado team that was playing their best basketball coming into that weekend. And these guys had a very difficult loss, right? Then they beat Oregon, swept last weekend at home, and I think they were, are starting to round into to great form um, as well. So, you know, we just got to keep going and understand we're not going to flinch, and we just know what we do works when we execute and have the right mindset. And how emotionally taxing, physically taxing is that game? Just be able to go three overtimes the way that it kind of ended. Um, I think it showed we had a lot of heart. Showed uh, we could play all the way down to the stretch. Um, some stuff didn't go our way, but uh, just the energy in the locker room after the game and during those three overtimes, it shows how much heart we have. So um, I think we could learn from it how we do it each and every loss or win and move on to the next. Alex. Uh, Brandon, you guys are going punch for punch basically all the second half and then the two overtimes. What do you think was the difference in that third overtime? Um, I don't know. We just, we just got to keep battling. You know, you, you got to keep fighting. You know, both teams are definitely fatigued. Um, and you just got to be able to fight through it and, you know, keep making winning plays. And, um, yeah. Joe? What was the struggle offensively in that first half, and then how did you guys kind of flip that in the second half? Um, I don't really think it was a struggle. I just think we didn't hit a couple shots. I mean, it's, we're not going to always make every shot. Um, but I think we took our, our matchups personal on defense and um, just flipped the switch in the second half. Um, 10 of 21 from the free throw line is the team. I mean, when you look at that stat and kind of look at some of the struggles you guys have had from the line, what do you feel like needs to be the emphasis to try and boost those numbers? Um, honestly, I think we're a good free throw shooting team. I was two for seven tonight, hard on myself about my misses. Um, we just got to step up there and make free throws, honestly. Josh? Uh, how does this, how, or I guess, how can this game kind of give you confidence as you go into March? I know that you're trying to play to get them deep in March, but these games you obviously want to be able to have and be in those types of environments. I mean, it just shows that you can compete with, you know, the best of them, you know, the top 10 team. Um, you know, our fans are amazing tonight. I just want to thank all of them for coming out. I um, forgot to mention that earlier. But, you know, it just shows that, you know, this this program has what it, ha it has, what it has, I mean, has That's what it takes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sorry, I'm very tired. It has what it takes, uh, to, you know, to really do what we need to do to, you know, have success and in going into March. Uh, Brandon, you mentioned uh, the fans. Um, you've obviously been here long enough to kind of see, basically since Craig has been here, like the, the rise in attendance here. Unfortunately, tonight was your first home loss of this season. Um, you know, Craig was talking about, like, it helps to win, obviously, and, um, and the fans are really important and they impact winning. From your perspective as a player, uh, not just on the court, but maybe some of the things off the court, to what do you attribute kind of like the rise in, in um fan support that you've kind of seen the last couple of years? Like, why is it getting better? Is yeah, that like, yeah. I would say it's just, you know, I think I think our our staff, first of all, is does a great job of going out and engaging with everyone outside and off the court to get people to come to games. And then I think our media team does a good job. But I think other than that, it's just, it's been, you know, success with the program. And, you know, things have been, you know, going up. We've been playing good. And I think that just really helps to um, get fans out and, you know, we had a, an amazing crowd and sorry to let some of those guys down kind of close out tonight. But, you know, those, like, he really, Coach Smith really, like, says when we, they help impact winning, they really do. You know, I think they really helped to bring us back in in that second half when we were down 16. Um, and they're just, you know, they helped to bring a whole different energy. Dave Arn, for once and for all, how, how do you say your name the right way? You said it right, Dave Arn, Dave Arn, yeah, Thank yeah. you, I apologize for, for streaming that. You, you've been around a bunch of different teams. Right. And that second half, when you guys came out and started just playing ball and moving it around and started vibing off each other, it, it was really remarkable to watch that comeback. How good is this group when you guys are playing at that level, all the places you've been? Uh, I think I said this a few weeks ago. I said it's honestly one of the best teams I've been on, uh, on the court and off the court. We just have 
trust in each other. We watch each other put in the work. So when I pass the ball to BC, I pass it to Gabe, whoever it is. I, I, I already count the bucket like I think it's going in. Um, I think we're just in a great environment, though. Um, win or lose, I think uh, we were hard on each other in the locker room at halftime to, to uh, come back and play hard that second half. But I just think the environment we put ourselves in um, helps us a lot. I'm not asking you guys to, to comment on the refs, but in those moments, like especially like yours, the I'll call it the phantom foul that you had when you tried to pick off the pass, hmm. those moments, especially late in the game, how does that change the momentum of the game? Does it make you fight harder, or is it just kind of, is it hard to kind of keep fighting back when you have those moments? <coughs> um, it changes the, the momentum a lot, um, honestly, but you just got to go to the next play. They're in control of the game. That's why they're refereeing. We don't agree with all the calls, but they're doing their job to the best of their ability, so it's all good. Um, this is for, for both of you guys, a question on, on Gabe. Last time you guys played Arizona, completely different result, but he played really well then. He played well tonight. Obviously, he's one of you guys' most impactful players, but what do you guys see from him from a competitiveness standpoint that like allows him to rise to the occasions against these big opponents? Yeah, I think Gabe really craves you know these big games, big moments. You know, he wants he wants that uh, that tough shot at the end of the game to you know tie it up. You know he did it tonight. He did it against when we played BYU uh, to you know kind of seal the deal. And Gabe, you know, he craves those moments and he loves it. And he really steps up to it. And I just think Gabe has such a competitive spirit um, and you know he hates losing. And so that's what you know kind of breeds to his success. One more question. No. How do you guys kind of turn the page after such a physically and emotionally draining game? Uh, to get ready for Arizona State? Um, honestly, it just shows uh, where we're at as a team, the fight we have. Um, take out the first half and just we put together that second half how we did. We take that into the next game. I think the sky's the limit for us. We can compete with the best, clearly. Um, I just think it's motivation for the rest of the season and all the games down the line.